Hi there, it's Alana, and you're listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm here with Jamie. How are things going? Good. How are you? I'm good. Kind of tired. It's Friday morning, and I feel like it's been a busy week. Like, it seems ridiculous that we can be busy when we haven't left the house in like 58 days, but it's feeling kind of busy. It does. Well, my husband has had, this is safety week for his business. He works in construction. Mm -hmm. And so he's been out at different operations that are going to be, that are doing their safety orientation things, I guess. So he's been out of the house by six almost every day. Wow. So I've been, it's been like kind of a little glimpse back to life before, because I usually make him coffee in the morning. Right, right. these days I go back to sleep after. <laughs> after yeah. He I used to do that. My husband used to have back before we had kids, he had this like early job. He had to leave the house by five and like, I'd get up, we'd have breakfast and then I'd just go back to bed. <laughs> yeah. So I have been going back to sleep after he leaves, but I have been getting up uh, with him, which has been nice. reminiscent of the days when I know. we had early morning stuff. <laughs> Weird, isn't it? It's similar with my husband's job. So he works with foster families and So his schedule has basically been going into the office, doing like paperwork, um, kind of office desk job stuff in the morning. And then he comes home around lunch and like he'll have phone meetings or things like that that he just does here from home. And just today, like they're starting more and more people are coming in. He went like over a month where he was the only one in the office, like the entire day. And, you know, every day there have been more people they're getting to where they're going to be doing activities for the foster kids, like at his office starting next week. So it is, it's, it's very similar, just kind of going back to a little bit more of the pre pandemic schedule, you know, it's still not not exactly the same and might not be for a little while, but kind of getting back there. Yeah. Well, and especially our state, which I think is mm-hmm. if not yep. the lowest in terms of cases. And mm-hmm. so we're reopening some things cautiously, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, it is, yeah. it's started. And I think other states too are kind of in the reopening phases. Yeah. Just slowly waiting testing to see the what waters. happens. Yeah. 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 It'll be interesting to see what happens and just hoping for the best and for businesses to get back on their feet and yeah yeah like my husband's going tonight the pastor's having like an elders meeting at his house this will be the first you know kind of in-person thing that's been going on and it's kind of weird it is it's very different there's you know we're kind of at a crossroads now because there's talk there that they actually specifically said um in the last governor's update that they would be talking about um reopening uh sports like how to do that safely and so mm-hmm, being mm-hmm. that we have our kids in hockey we've we've had to think okay mm-hmm. if they open up what is it going to look like for us and yeah. how are we going to do that you know we're talking through okay you know how do we minimize any exposure to anything if they do open things up so mm-hmm. lots of decisions you know personal decisions to be made as things start to open yeah. up so I'm a little, you know, yesterday in particular, I've seen it kind of brewing, I guess, just people being a little bit, I don't know, maybe getting, getting kind of anxious and uh, I don't know what you would call it. Just, I'm, I'm specifically talking about social media, um, uh-huh. people yeah. getting maybe either bored and, and starting to get kind of quippy with each other. Um, Mm -hmm. there was a particular video that has gone out that has gotten some really ugly responses on both sides of the, of the Uh COVID, um, thing that I've been seeing. And I've just, it, it just disheartens me to see so much anger right now. I Mm -hmm. feel like there's a lot of anger on, I won't even say both sides, meaning people that think that think that, that this isn't a big deal or people that think that it's really big deal and, and are angry with people that don't take it seriously. Not just those two sides, but everywhere in between people have these right. ideas. And I just, I, it's, it's kind of disheartening to see the anger and division, mm-hmm. even within the body of Christ. Like I'm seeing that happening. So I guess yeah. that's kind of weighing on me just, um, that we really need to be praying for unity. Not that everybody has to have the same opinion. I mean, that's actually right, the, for sure. I think that's the crux of it is not everybody has to have the same opinion, but um, 
how do we navigate conversations with love? How do we navigate mm-hmm. social media with love? How do we yeah. just approach our own hearts on the matter? Which is just a theme that's been running through this whole ordeal for me personally mm-hmm. and, and just, I think, for everybody. So, But it is hard. We're getting to where, you know, the first couple of weeks, it definitely felt like everybody was in the exact same boat. Right. This We're is a together. universal thing. We're in this together. And now it definitely feels, it feels more divided. In addition to people being angry with people, there's a lot of just mistrust because like, are we getting the full picture? And, you know, you can read two headlines that like are saying the exact same thing and come to complete opposite um, conclusions about it, you yeah. know? And so what do you, what do you do with that? Of course, there's going to be mistrust because there's no way to sift through there's no way that someone like you or me kind of like what we talked about when you were talking about god's omniscience like there's no way that you and i are going to know all the contingencies like there's no way that you and i even know the scope of what is going on right now and that is hard because we're we we feel helpless and that's not a good feeling so either you know you feel helpless because the big bad government has shut everything down for this itty bitty virus. It's, you know, no worse than the flu is how some people look at it. Or, you know, we've got this cataclysmic virus that could end the human race that people aren't taking seriously. You know, like those are the two, two extremes. And so of course there's going to be just, there's a lot of fear and mistrust and it's hard. It is. And it's hard when, when you don't know, like you said, you don't know what to believe because we're Mm -hmm. not experts. We're not, you know, hard to know who's got an agenda and who doesn't. I mean, it is. Jamie, everybody has an agenda. That's right. (laughs) There you go. All right. Step one, takeaway for today. Everybody has an agenda. That's true. Absolutely. Oh, but no, it is hard. And that's, um, yeah, you know, that's kind of what we're weathering right now. I think we're, we're over the, the eye of the storm and now just into just kind of that murky, mucky, yucky. Yeah. It's not, I, I'd rather go back to like five weeks ago when we were all in the same boat together. We all thought we were going to die. <laughs> well, yeah. Cause now it's like, it, we're, we're hashing out, you know what I liken it to? It's kind of like this time of year in Alaska where yes. we go from frozen and <laughs> snow and ice. And now you just got, well, actually Right now, for us, there's not even slush. Things have dried, dry. but there's that couple but there's weeks the, of just the break mush and gross, and it's yucky, and yeah, that does feel exactly like what this is. You it know, does. like the breakup. You never yeah. want to stay in the middle of winter, of course, but you don't want to have to go through that mushy, yucky, murky stuff to get to spring. So, but the good news is that we can look and say, okay, this is this is change. It means that things are changing. It feels yucky. It feels mucky, Mm -hmm. but it's moving in a direction. It's moving forward and we got to get through this. But I think the most Mm -hmm. important thing is that we need to make sure that as, as believers, that we are not contributing to the problem. And I say that to myself or anyone else, because I will admit, I read things and it gets me riled up and I, and I get mm-hmm. angry about, you mm-hmm. know, how could that person believe that? Or why doesn't yeah. that person believe that? And how mm-hmm. could that person do that? And it's just our nature when the stakes are so high, you know, when yeah. our health is in the balance, when our mm-hmm. jobs are in the balance, when we're yeah. stressed, you know? So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that is my prayer today is just God help me to see, see clearly and, and to approach everything with, with a lens of love. But yes. it's, hard. it's hard. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and probably I, I think another good takeaway, you know, one, everybody has an agenda. I'm glad we got that out there. <laughs> and yeah. two for takeaways is, um, wow, it totally flew out of my head. It's that not everybody has to agree with you in order to be a decent thoughtful yes. person. Yep. You know, and that's okay. Like we need that humility to understand like none of us know exactly what's going on. Mm-hmm. None of us know all of the what ifs and who cares if somebody takes things more or less seriously than you do like that that is why we don't have thought police. You know, like that is yep. <laughs> we have the freedom to come to our own opinions about things and that's okay. I saw something today that was just an example of 
humility and that kind of attitude that mm-hmm. I just, I mm-hmm. love seeing. And it was someone that had posted something as if it were, yes, this is true. And later found something that, you know, on Facebook, these things happen. You mm-hmm. post something and then mm-hmm. it gets debunked and you're like, oops. And right, right. It was something similar to that where they, then they went back and said, you know what? I posted something. I have learned more information about it. And mm-hmm. I, I don't know if it, if that, that was the full picture and actually tagged some people they had had conversations with and said, you know, I just I might've been wrong. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, I loved it. I loved the humility and the, um, the heart of wanting to seek truth. Right. And not wanting to just stir stuff up. And that, that's yeah. what we need to have is a heart mm-hmm. that is willing and, and desiring to seek truth, to display truth, but then, you know, having the humility to know, oops, I got it wrong. And let's, mm-hmm. let's move forward together and look for the good. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Nope, that makes a lot of sense. Well, you want to jump into it just for fun? Yeah, totally. All righty. What is one way that your family has changed for the better because of this? And it needs to be specific. It can't just be, we're spending more time together. Yeah. That was I'm going to make it answer. hard. Yeah. Darn it. That was my answer. <laughs> um, I would say that we have learned to be still more. And so... Uh, okay. Two things. So okay. we've learned we've learned to be still... I'm talking about myself mostly, but all of us, I uh-huh. think, where we don't always have to be doing something. We had gotten into this mm-hmm. habit of we had been always on our way somewhere or yeah. doing something with a purpose. And now I, I see in the kids, I see in myself that it's like, okay, we are able to just be, we're able to mm-hmm. just sit. We're able, yeah. like this morning, I went in the kids' room to wake them up and, um, was just sitting on the floor, had my coffee and I'm just talking to them. And like, mm-hmm. I just, I had this moment of, wow, I can do this. This is awesome. I yeah. can just sit here and, mm. and just have a conversation and not yeah. feel like I'm always, I had this feeling always that I was anxious to be on to the next thing. Right. Like there was always something that I was driving toward and now mm-hmm. there's less of that. And I'll admit not enough less of that because I still feel that residual feeling, even though I'm at home all day, every day, I still have right. that feeling of, oh, mm-hmm. there are dishes to do. Oh, the bathroom needs yeah, work. Or yeah. the, you know, but, mm-hmm. um, but we're learning that. And the second thing is, I think the kids have learned to get along with each other, like resolve conflicts better rather than Good. That's like, awesome. like they're duking it out for a little bit, but then they're resolving mm-hmm. it rather than before. I don't know if they had enough time. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. to duke it out. And, and right. I would a lot of times just intervene and just say, no, don't do that. This is wrong. Right. Something else. Mm-hmm. But I'm just letting them hash it out sometimes. And that's awesome. And it's, I think it's being, yeah, that's, that's something that I've enjoyed. Wow. <laughs> I loved watching them fight. It's been so fun. I just get popcorn <laughs> and I sit there and I just watch them. It's awesome. Oh, that's hilarious. Upper, um, uppercut. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Anyway, well, what about you? Um, we're spending more time together. I really appreciate that. So. <laughs> no care. <laughs> um, let's see. We are definitely enjoying our TV time together. The kids are loving psych. We are laughing like crazy. That's we funny. now have like 18 million inside jokes because they have like all these funny catchphrases and things like that. Oh, can I tell you something? Yes. Okay. So I have a friend who recently, she breeds dogs and Uh recently her, one of her dogs had a litter of puppies Uh and she named them all after psych characters. Oh, that's hilarious. And I don't know the inside joke yet because we haven't gotten that far into it, but pineapples were like a big theme. She had a big pineapple that the puppies were inside of. Uh, Yeah. That's cute. I love it. I'll have to send, I'll have to send you her little... Uh, or whatever, like her post, I'll tag you in it or something. Cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm yeah. sorry, I interrupted. No, that's been super fun. And then we're just doing more walks as a family. And 
it's kind of nice because like our our kids enjoy hiking and we haven't gotten back into hiking and i used to enjoy walking like to me it's just as easy to walk the neighborhood like it's easier to walk the neighborhood right. than to pack everybody up drive over here put your parking permit blah 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 but for the kids like walking the neighborhood it's sort of like what's the point like if we're not going right. somewhere what's the point point? and mm -hmm. basically like right now the point is there's nothing else to do the dogs need exercise you need exercise and we need fresh air so it's just been kind of nice to not have the um i guess the the fights about it because mm -hmm. <laughs> like, i could be every single day let's go on a walk and i would get do we have to why <laughs> and now it's just it's what we do that's <laughs> so, cool yeah that's really neat yeah well, i've also realized that i have been i've been trying to be more fun because i've realized i'm not a super fun mom i'm really? i well i just i don't i I don't know, like we laugh and, and have jokes and stuff, but like mm -hmm. there are certain things that I'll do and certain things that I'm just like, mm, I don't really want to do that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess that's okay. It's okay to have boundaries. But so True. as a, for instance, I've been making a conscious choice to try to be more fun. And so last night, my daughter loves her rollerblades. So all three of the uh -huh. kids have rollerblades and um, she, every time she's outside, she puts them on and she's doing whatever, playing Fun. catch in her rollerblades, just tooling around, playing basketball in her rollerblades. Wow. And so I, she wanted me to put on my oldest son's rollerblades because uh -huh. his feet are way bigger than mine now and his rollerblades are too small right now. Oh, okay. So she said, maybe they'll fit you. And Aww. my, my last experience with rollerblades was not a good one. Uh -huh. um, I was I think in high school and my friend, oh, wow. yeah, my best friend convinced me to buy rollerblades with her and we got them and we went to DC. I can't remember if it was the tidal basin or somewhere. And there was a hill like, and so I just, yeah. all I remember about that day was oh, no. getting out of control, rolling down the hill. Cause I could roller skate really well. Like I thought, Oh, yeah. this will be easy. It's not the same. And oh, no. I wiped out. I had a big wipe out. So mm. So I did, but I put the rollerblades on last night and I uh -huh. looked like a moron. I had my puffy, <laughs> I had my puffy coat on cause I'm a cold uh -huh. wimp and it was kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. And I had elbow pads over my puffy coat, so like <laughs> the Michelin man going down the street, but it was so much fun. And uh. she stopped and she's like, mom, we just have so much fun together. Don't we? Oh, that's adorable. I, and I wanted to cry because Aww. what I've come to realize is when I do take the time not to be like, quote unquote, busy in my yeah. mind, I'm busy. I got adult yeah, stuff yeah, to yeah. do. Yeah. Um, it only takes a few of those times, you know, maybe one, you know, once a week if I were to do that. And my kid mm -hmm. is going to remember that like that. Right. So, it doesn't even have to be once a week. I mean, like once, once a, a month, year. once a year. Yeah. <laughs> But that memory is going to stay. Like I, I was listening yeah. to Dave Ramsey a few weeks ago and he said, if you ask my daughters about um, going on dates with their dad, mm -hmm. um, they'll tell you, oh, we did that all the time. He's like, yeah. I took them on maybe five dates total. Right, like, right. Ever. In their whole life. <laughs> yeah. But they, and he's <laughs> but like, remember that. they mm -hmm. remembered it and they thought it was so that is exciting to me. So that I think that's another benefit. I've had the the physical, well, physical, whatever the time mm -hmm. and logistical. ability, logistical yeah. time to be like, mm -hmm. I want to be more fun. And I have been able to do little, Aww. just silly stuff. I like love that. that. Yeah. yeah. That was fun. My dad used to do this thing. So my mom died when I was three. So he raised my brother and me as a single dad for about five years. And he remained very, very playful, which looking back, like, it would have been enough for him to keep us from starving. You know what I mean? But right. he was playful. We went camping a lot. And, and maybe it's the same thing. Maybe we went camping like three times. In my mind, <laughs> we were camping like once a month, you know? Right. Um, and he would do this thing when he came home from work. I forget the name, but basically like it was a game where the entire point of the game was to act as silly as we could. And he would actually set a timer for half an hour. Like, can you imagine half an hour, like running around being silly? Like, doesn't that sound exhausting to you? It does. It does. And, and he would like that. That was just kind of a regular, a regular thing. I don't remember if it was every day once a week. I think like my memory is every day. And I'm like, no, no parent could do that every single day. <laughs> Because, yeah, it takes energy to be playful. I totally get what you mean. Like, I don't, 
I don't do the pretend play anymore at all because it's just it's exhausting. I do. I'm like I'll do puzzles. I don't like to role yep. play. My my daughter yeah. loves to play puppies, where Aww. she's the puppy. And it's adorable, but I, I just, I can't, I can't see, but I would do that if it meant I get like cuddles, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Come here, little puppy. Come give me a hug. If I got cuddles out of it, I would do that. I would, but she's bossy. (laughs) She's bossy about it. She's like, now you've got to tell me to sit and roll over. Okay. Yeah. No, (laughs) (laughs) there are rules and it's gotta be my rules. No, but it is. She's, she's, she's a hoot, but yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Fun. Playful is fun and good. And mm-hmm, I, mm-hmm. I think we will come out of this and I will carry that on because of the few, yeah. the moments that I've had that have been like that, that have just mm-hmm. been like, wow, that that's making a difference in my kids. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. What about you and your husband? Have you guys found any like special ways to connect during this time? Working on our bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was wondering if that's where you were going to go. It was. Yeah. We actually mm-hmm. like, we'll turn music on in the bathroom Aww. and it's really close now. We're really <clears throat> close to having it done and cool. we'll turn music on and just kind of, you know, that's been one of our things. Another thing is every once in a while, he'll just say, it, we'll kick the kids outside to play and he'll say, Hey, let's mm-hmm. just, let's just sit down in our camp chairs and watch them play. Like, we Aww, play, that's but we'll fun. just sit there and yeah. so we'll just sit there. So it's been cool. That's or very fun. the most recent thing is, so there are a few shows that we watch that they can't watch. And, yeah. Yeah. And so, um, okay. So that reminds me of Curious George. I, this is a total. Assignment yeah. Okay. It says Curious George is a monkey and he can do things that you can't do. Did you ever watch that show? A little bit. I know the books better anyway, but it's, yeah. That's an aside. Anyway, so we, <laughs> that, that was horrible. That was like, a good aside. <laughs> I should just edit that out. That just reminds we can watch shows that you can't watch. So don't come in the office. So we'll go into so my husband. Have you ever read Frog and Toad? Frog and Toad. I, that sounds familiar, but it doesn't, like, I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, so it's a frog and a toad. That's all <laughs> I wanted to say. <laughs> Man, go these on. Are, these are gems. <laughs> go on, go on, okay. please. Anyway, so we'll go into the spare bedroom, which is where he does his work. It's set up as his office yeah. right now. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. so we have a bed in there, but it folds up. And so he's yeah. got a little desk in there and, or, you know, like a fold up camp table. And mm-hmm. there's a TV in there. So sometime, mm-hmm. and he has his exercise equipment in there. So we'll go in there and he'll either exercise or we'll eat dinner. And sometimes we'll just have the kids eat in one room watching a show and we'll go in and watch a show in there together. So Mm -hmm. it's almost like a date. (laughs) A date night. Yeah. 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 How about you guys? Um, going on walks, you know, at least a few times a week, it'll just be Scott and me. And that's, that's really good. Just, yeah. Just talking time. Um, you know, he's just, he's around more and it's really, really nice. Mm -hmm. You know, he's home by lunch and it's not like we're spending, um, you know, every minute from noon until bedtime, like within five feet of each other, but it's just, you know, it's nice. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah in terms of like <clears throat> specifics, I think probably the, the walks are the one way that we just kind of get our alone time. We don't have to really think about what the kids are doing. Don't have to worry if, you know, if we have something to talk about that we don't live to appear, we don't need to worry about it. Things like that. Mm-hmm. It's That's been good. good. Yeah. Um, and then I've been working more on just some author busy work type things. And so some nights we'll watch, we've been watching Last Man Standing, the Tim Allen sitcom. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's been pretty fun, you know, just having something to make us laugh. That's good. Yeah. Anyway, um, that was the just for fun question. What do you want to talk about now? Hmm. I don't know. We cured her. We cured COVID. We talked about psych. <laughs> you told me something I didn't know about Curious George. I told you something you didn't know about Frog and Toad. So that they were a frog and a toad. <laughs> but you don't know which one's which. It never <laughs> specifically says. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, yeah. So we're done with our COVID devotions, but those are still available online. Is that right? Yeah. So you can go to praychristianwomen.com/slash. Be the light, which is all one word, and get those, uh, get that 
download so that you can get, it's a 14 day devotional. Yeah. And yesterday was the national day of prayer, which last year, um, we had a, I think I may have re-aired our interview with Jennifer Kennedy Dean for that day, but we didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't do anything. Yeah. Yesterday we did not recognize that, but if you were part of that, it's, it's a day where everybody comes together and praise for our nation, praise for our world. Um, and Jennifer Kennedy Dean actually had a book that was used as kind of a reference guide. So oh, cool. I can post a link to that in our description in case they're interested in doing that. Cause every day can be the national day of prayer. We can always, you know, we can always pray for our nation. What if you are not in the same nation? I know. Like that's the other if thing. If I were in Canada and you were in the U S like, could we still have a national day of prayer? I think at that, that point, that point doesn't need to be international. It would be the international day of prayer. Well, let's do it. All right. The IDOP. <laughs> That's right. And actually there may already be one. I don't, I think there might even there be an international. Is. We got to Google that, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There might be an international day of prayer, but anyway, um, yeah, it's, it's always a good time to pray for our nation. It is. Yeah. Um, I had one more thing that I was thinking we could point yeah, people to. Absolutely. So since you and I have finished, we've been reading these devotions on the air. And so we've, we've completed our devotion. You know, I don't know about everybody listening if they're caught up yet. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> but, um, but we have talked a little bit about going back to some of the coffee break type of episodes. Mm -hmm. And so those are where people listening will send us questions about prayer. It doesn't have to be pandemic related. It might be kind of nice to talk about things non-pandemic for a little bit. So yeah. if you have questions, you can submit those to us at prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions because like I definitely want to keep up regularly recording. And so that will give us something to kind of keep the focus um, you know, back to prayer for sure. And yeah, so praying com slash questions. It doesn't even have to be like a specific question. It can be more like, Hey, can you guys talk about this? Or I find right. that this is a, this is a prayer struggle I have. I was wondering if other people do too, things like that. It doesn't have to be like a specific, does the Bible say this? It can be anything prayer related. Yeah. Prayer topic ideas or yeah, podcast topic yeah. ideas, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yes, because yes. I think like I've I've very very much appreciated us being able to just have these kind of usually lighthearted conversations. But I don't know how you feel. I'm I'm kind of excited to almost put those behind us. I mean, I'm sure we'll still talk about what's going on pandemic wise, but it'll be mm -hmm. nice to get into a more regular format maybe i'm feeling that way too i think i think it's time i find that when i'm looking at facebook or instagram and i see just inspirational quotes about who god is mm -hmm. and about you know that mm -hmm. it's so refreshing that it doesn't have to be pandemic related so i think I maybe know. people are getting others are getting to that point too of like okay we yeah. can get back to because it is pandemic related when it's something that's going to strengthen you and, and put your focus on God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I'm very, very glad that we have been doing it the way we've been doing it, but I'm also looking forward to, um, yeah, to a going back to a more original esque type format. Yep. Cool. Well, right. should we pray? I think that would be a good idea. You want Alrighty. to pray or you want well, me maybe to maybe I'll close this today. Yeah, that sounds I'll good. Close this today. God, we just thank you so much for the ways that you've been carrying so many people through such a trying time. We pray for people who have lost jobs or income or who are sick or worried. And we just thank you that you know the details for each and every one of our lives. And we just commit ourselves to you. Thank you for keeping Jamie and her family safe and well. Thank you for your protection over the state of Alaska, and we just pray for your sustaining power to sustain our health, sustain our family, sustain our economy, our nations, and all the nations represented by those listening, God. We just know that you're the one who is sovereign, 
over every single thing and you are so powerful and we're so grateful to you for all the ways you've provided for us. Amen. Amen. All righty. Well, thank you all for listening and Jamie, thank you for recording with me and we'll talk to everybody soon ish. <laughs>